Good morning, assembler class. This should be your first um, lesson on um, computer architecture and assembler. So I've put up here on the glass board. It's called a glass board because it's actually a uh, like a blackboard or a whiteboard, except it's made out of glass. I can knock on it like that. Okay, um, it's not related to me being Professor Glass. So, in this Glassboard lecture, this is your first introduction to how the assembler or how the machine actually executes um, code, assembler programs, and a little bit how you write them. And the, but the big lesson here, the big lesson here, is what's actually happening in the computer. So I have a very short piece of programming which does almost nothing. It doesn't even manage to print out Hello World. Um, <laughs> but, um, and that's the program as part over here. And the part over here, which you're going to have to get into your head, is what it all look more or less schematically looks like in the computer. So we're going to start with the basic notions. The basic notions is that you have memory. Memory is composed of bytes. So I have this memory is, this is increasing, going down the um, screen here, increasing bits of memory, each byte, and the first four bytes here are going to be 8 easy 30 which if you look at it in the other direction is 3 easy 8 except it's a 0, 3 easy 8 which represents what? The number 1,000. So these four bytes of memory are starting at address 31 dog 6. So this is the address of that little bit of memory. And the address is really pointing at the first byte. And the first byte happens to be the low order byte of the number. Um, so this is the address of a spot in memory. And the next four bytes in memory from that spot are going to contain the number a thousand, except of course it's three easy eight. Um, so three e easy eight, I guess, is one byte. So easy eight is one byte. I'm sorry, I do that wrong. And then zero three is the next byte, and then zero 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 zero. So so easy eight is the low byte because each byte each text is just four. Okay, fine. Okay. So what does that look like in your program? Well, in your assembler program, it looks like this. You had a variable called p. So this is called a label, not a variable in assembler. dw, um, actually for four bytes, I should have made dd, my apologies. But I'm not going to start this again. Uh, dd. Um, this this is dd means define a what's known as a d word a d word is four bytes so the p you then get saying four bytes and then inside of those four bytes put the value of a thousand this label is going to be the variable name this is saying use four bytes of memory. This is saying put four uh, four, uh, you know, one thousand in those four bytes of memory. Over here, we see the address in memory is three one dog six. So effectively, every time in your program, you refer to the label p. The computer actually turns that. I mean, the assembler before your program starts to run replaces every place that you put a p as a variable name, it replaces it with this number, 31 dog So if we look inside your program as it's sitting there ready to run in memory, every place you had a p as a variable name is going to be this number. Okay? So this is memory. We had a q, which said resd instead of dd. ResD may, may basically means a variable that hasn't been initialized. 
So DD is a four byte variable which has been initialized. ResD is four bytes and there's some crud in there which we're going to eventually overwrite with another crud, that's okay. So that's going to be the next four bytes in memory. And this is another thing about the assembler which is different from your high order languages. In the assembler, if you put these things right after each other in your program, they are guaranteed to be right after each other in memory. So whereas in a regular language, you declare two variables, that language could put them anywhere in memory. And you don't care because you never find out where they are in memory anyway. But for assembler, and we're going to use this feature in assembler. So we have a label P four bytes at that address. We have a label Q, the next four bytes is a 3-1 dog alpha. 6 plus 4 is alpha, right? Remember hex? And then we're going to have a variable called stir, which is a string. Again, this is just a label pointing to a spot in memory. And this is db, meaning we're making bytes, not four byte d words. And then we could put a string here, and then each one of these is one byte. So a capital H is a hex 48. A capital uh, lowercase i, a lowercase i is a hex 69. A space is a hex 20. And then we have more, 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 more. And then the last thing we put here after the string is a zero. And if you're familiar with C programming, you're familiar with the idea that strings are going to end with zero. We're, we're mostly going to do, we're not required to, but we're mostly going to do the same thing here. It's just very convenient. So this says, starting at this spot in memory, stir starts at this spot in memory, through one dog easy. Okay, starting at this spot in memory, put these bytes into memory. And those are, these are ASCII characters, each is one byte, and then put this byte into memory is over there. So that's our data. That's called the data section over here. And you will actually write that in your code. You'll say this is a data section. Later you'll write what's called the text section. The text section is where your program goes. Why it's called text, I have no idea. But it's called text. Um, so this is where your program is. And you can have labels in your program also, although we're not putting those in here right now, but you will have labels in the program. Um, so the text session, you're going to write instructions. And we're not going to see what this looks like right now, but just get the idea that this instruction over here, okay, just like this label and this variable over here was this, this little bit of memory, and this guy over here was that longer bit of memory. This instruction over here turned into just some binary group that is going to be some, some chunk of memory. So there's a number of bytes there which contain some binary goop which represents this instruction. And now we have another instruction and another instruction is just like the data. If I put two things in a row, they're going to follow each other directly in memory, like that. So here's a, an add instruction. Here's another move instruction. You're going to find move as your, your most common instruction by far. Most of them are going to be move for it. Anyway, a large fraction of them are going to be move. Okay? Like that. So what you're going to have is you're going to write your, your program. And generally speaking, each line that you write is going to correspond to one instruction, one machine instruction, a bunch of binary groups that the machine knows how to do is a single elemental thing. Okay, so the next thing you need to know is that, as I mentioned, you get a bunch of temporary variables that are built in. And here I'm showing you a few of them. One of them is called EAX. EAX is going to be four bytes. EBX is going to be four bytes. ECX is going to be four bytes. Okay, you, we have some others. I mean, there, you can actually use part of this if you don't want to use all four bytes. That's another story that's coming up. Okay, and then we have one here which is called EIP. EIP is called the instruction pointer. Now the thing to understand about how the computer works is EIP is the finger, is the computer's finger 
in your program. And as I mentioned in the class, the way this works is just the way you learned in 157. You figuratively put your finger on the program, you do it, you move your finger down. You do the next thing, you move your finger down, right? You get to a loop, then you go back up, right? But you, the only way to read a program is to mentally put your finger there and then move the finger along until you get to like an if statement or a while statement or something, and then you know where to go from there, okay? But you move your finger to where it tells you to move it. It's after the if statement. And then you keep going down one at a time. And then you get to a subroutine call. So now you move your finger over to the method. You get to a method call. You move your finger over to the method, and when you get all done, you move your finger back. Like that, okay? The computer has a finger. It's called the instruction pointer. And we're going to start the program. Your program starts by some other program putting the address of your first line of code into the instruction pointer. And the computer sort of can't help itself. All the computer does is very mechanical. You're not surprised. All the computer does is it goes to this spot in memory, wherever the instruction pointer says, loads this, whatever's there, and then does whatever that says. Typically, this instruction pointer then moves down by that amount. That's why it's sometimes called the program counter. It's like counting its way down the okay? So this piece of code is loaded. It gets done. The instruction pointer gets moved to the next. Okay. Now the instruction pointer is here. It tells the computer, load this guy. It loads, it fetches it. It's called fetching. Fetch this instruction. Execute the instruction. The instruction pointer is now down to there. Fetch this instruction. Execute the instruction. This goes down, down to here. Now there are instructions which are like if statements and loops and things like that. They're called things like jumps. So you can, in your code, cause the instruction pointer to, you know, go over to here, you know, call a subroutine or go around the uh, part of the if. But generally speaking, what's going to happen is the instruction pointer is going to be the computer's finger. Okay, and here's the thing, which is kind of scary. You can get any number you want into the instruction pointer, and the computer will try to do it. If you happened to get 31dog6 into your instruction pointer, the computer would grab this, you know, 3easy8 out of memory. If it happened to be a legitimate instruction, it would do it. Okay? It doesn't know. It's just some bytes it got out of memory. Instruction pointer said, go there. It went there, got some bytes, it did it. All right? And this turns out to be actually the basis of um, a lot of malware. So there's, there are certain types of malware exploits which um, will do things like put uh, code. They'll inject code into your data areas. So your program is reading some data, right? So it reads some data. So what it read was the malware program. So the malware program is sitting like in an array or a buffer in your computer, in your programs. And then you can do things which will trick it to move the instruction pointer into the data area. But the data which was read, like over the network or something, actually contains the bad code. So yes, that's how that absolutely you can execute the data. <laughs> All right. So Fetch execute is the main idea. All right. Now, the next main idea is that you get certain temporary variables. Most instructions will use these temporary variables, and we have three of these temporary variables up here. So there are only a few of them. There's like half a dozen or so temporary variables that you'll normally be, able be playing with that have general purpose. And there's a few more that are special purpose. OK? But most of the work that you're going to do is going to involve these temporary variables. So 
without further ado, we're going to imagine that somebody loaded this address, 10, into the instruction pointer and started it going. So there it is on this move instruction. And this move instruction says, move the contents of variable p into EAX. These brackets are crucial. If I have the brackets here, it says p is a variable. So you go inside the variable. So it says go to the p spot in memory, grab what's there. So what's there? 0, 3, easy, 8, right? So let's just, this instruction is going to move the contents from 3, 1, dog, 6 into EAX. How do we know how many bytes to move? Well, it's actually knowing because of the, not because this thing said it was four bytes. This piece is just a spot in memory. We could have told it to move one byte, two bytes, four bytes, or eight bytes. And it knows in this case that we're asking to move four bytes because EAX is a four byte temporary variable. So that letter P is not the name of this 4-byte thing, even though it's really the name of this 4-byte thing. But from the computer's point of view, that letter P is just the name for this spot in memory. All right, so we'll move all of this into EAX, where we put an arrow, so O3 is E8, right? So 3 is E8. Let's just put that better. sitting in register EAX. What the uh, we need to do for these guys? Okay. The next thing it says was add EAX 17. So this guy got moved down after the move instruction. Moved down to 6, which is this guy here. We have the add instruction. And this says, just says take the number 17, a constant 17, and add it into this temporary variable. And we, we generally don't have, most of our instructions generally operate on these temporary variables. So adding a something into directly into the memory part, for, for most operations we want to do, we can't really do that. Okay, mostly what we have to do is grab the data out of memory, put it into a temporary variable, which is called a register. These are called registers. Okay. I forgot to label them. Okay, R-E-G. Okay, so most of the time you're going to move data out of memory into a register, you're going to manipulate it, and then you're going to put it back into memory. There are some instruction uh, computers. The computers we're using are not so stunted. They have a fair number of play, playing with things in memory instructions without having to move them into a register first. When you get to the most popular processors on the market, I think right now the most popular processor, computer processor on the market, is an ARM. They're called reduced instruction set. They reduced, they reduced the instruction set so that everything is either move or operate on a register. There's no doing things to memory besides taking stuff out and putting stuff back in. That's it. Um, so the more complicated instruction set computers like you have in your PC, it could be a Mac, it could be a Windows machine, are uh, the uh, Intel machines, and that's what we're using for this class. And for those, there are more things you can do but generally, it's still the same model. It's mostly just taking things out. So we took uh, this thing and moved it into EAX. Here we added 17. So 17 is 1, 1 hex. So this becomes what? This becomes 3, Fox, 9. Then we had another move, which was move ECX, EAX to ECX. Now you'll notice that the move instruction went like that. 
we moved from here to here. It's backwards from what you normally think of as moving. We added from here into here. We're going to move from here into here. Got it? Okay. So that means what? ECX is going to get the same 3 Fox 9. And now EIP goes down to this spot over here. Okay. And now ECX is going to get moved into what? The piece of memory. Remember, brackets means go into the memory at the spot Q. So here's the spot Q. So this will now become 3 Fox 9. So 0003 Fox 9, and that's 4 bytes again. No problem? Same sort of thing. So we moved things from here to, to EAX. We added something into EAX. We moved EAX to ECX. We moved ECX back over here. We didn't need to move it into ECX. We just did that to show you that you could do that, right? So the last thing I'm showing you, last part over here, is another move instruction, and this says move EAX comma STR. And you'll notice there's no little brackets there. There's no brackets around. STR is the name for a spot in memory. It's not a variable. It's not a string variable, even though it is a string variable. From the computer's point of view, STR is just the name for the number 31DE. 31 dog easy is this address in memory. If I say move EAX, STR into 3 EAX, I'm really moving 3-1 dog easy into EAX. I'm not moving this stuff. I'm moving the address. STR is the name attached to this address. Just like I said, if I put P in my program, that gets replaced by 3-1 dog 6. I put STR, okay. So that's what's going to go here. So this EAX is going to contain Three one dog easy, and that was this instruction. Okay. So that's crucial. It's a mistake you're going to make a lot. Is sometimes doing this without the brackets when you mean the brackets, or vice versa. Okay. The last thing that happens here is we've got a a call instruction. A call instruction is a subroutine method call. It's going to a method called print string. That's good. And that method is going to print out the stuff which is in memory starting at whatever EAX says. So we're actually using this temporary variable EAX to pass a number to the method. And the number we're passing to the method is Here's a spot in memory. Start printing starting from this spot. And it will start printing until it gets to the zero. Okay. So when we do this call, EIP ends up with the address of our method. The EIP gets replaced with the address of the method, which is somewhere else, and it's going to go execute the method. Got it? Okay. So that's your quick and dirty introduction to machine architecture and how computers are doing what they're doing. Okay, there's a lot more to say about machine architecture, but this is kind of the programmer view. The programmer thinks of memory and addresses and registers like this. You know, engineers are thinking in terms of buses and instruction decoders and, and all that other kind of stuff, which I can talk about, but we don't need it for programming assembler because the software doesn't see those things. But the software does see memory addresses, instruction pointer, registers. And those, those are like your big, big concepts that you're playing with. Okay, I thank you. And coming up will be what? Some code for you to actually run. Thank you. <laughs>